is Transformers 96 here with another very review, this time of the Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Cyberverse Commander Hard Shell. So here you go. So um so yeah, so first of all let's just go over the packaging. As you can see, I do have a mint one here. Um this is an extremely new toy. I think that I am the first person to even review it. So I did pick up a second one to sell, but uh but here he is, as you can see. Pretty cool, he looks very nice in package, easy to spot on the shelves, hard shell, demolitions expert. On the back here you get a picture of the figure, a uh, picture of the uh, the figure in robot mode and insect mode, and a bio. Bio is just horrible, I don't know what's with this, but the new Transformers just really have um, terrible bios, they're just a sentence long, I mean, bios should intrigue people to buy it because it sounds like a cool character, and with a pretty generic, just one sentence bio of a character, it doesn't make anybody buy it, so I'm not sure why they're doing that, I mean, it doesn't like save them on ink or anything. Anything, so I have no idea but here's the stats as you can see uh, not very smart and not very skilled but other than that pretty high in everything except a little bit you know average on speed but yeah so very nice so of course this is an insect and um, I think it's brilliant to have him come out during this time of the beast hunters because he is a kind of beast character I mean he's an insect but uh, but it's completely move, uh, show accurate so it's not like they gave him a you know stupid you know gimmick uh, of turning into a dragon and or, uh, or a insect or something when he's not really that in the show because he is completely that in the show so um so he does transform into this uh, insect in the show and as you can see he actually looks pretty cool I think that the insect mode was done extremely well uh, he has a very nice robot mode as well as insect mode I think insect mode might be a little bit more accurate I love the back here it looks like an insect it actually does the um the wings are pretty cool they've they've got a little bit of detail and uh, just the plastics nice it's not like rubbery plastic or anything they use for the wings and they're on ball joints so they can do a lot and um, yeah so overall he looks pretty neat he's got a couple legs here he's got these which are all just together, they're all just on this little pin, and so they do not have any possibility, they will stay like this. Then you have these, um, which are his arms, and as you can see his hands there. It, 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 you think that it would look bad, uh, or worse than it actually does. The hands being up the top, I thought that would look really stupid, but because he's an insect and he's got all these sharp points, it really doesn't, you don't even notice it unless you actually know that these are his hands. So, I don't mind that as much as I really thought I would. His, this kind of forms, I don't know if they're trying to do like eyes, I guess these are supposed to be like eyes, and you get like the teeth here. It's well done. I mean, see, you can, you can get like the teeth there, it looks like, like he's got little teeth and then that's his nose and everything and then those are his eyes really interesting um, it, it, it's well designed and everything of course uh, I'm not going to go over, I'm not going to talk about the color until I transform him in robot mode but he does come with a weapon let me show you that so here's the weapon he comes with as you can see it's like a little kind of like blaster I don't know it's not really a gun because it's so flat it just I, I don't know what you'd call this um, it just says missile launcher so I don't know but it does shoot a missile and it works with the friction you just push this and it shoots it really shoots poorly and they were just too cheap to use a spring I think so unfortunately not the best weapon whatsoever really not a fan of this thing it's got a little bit of detail but nothing special and it's really not painted I mean this I think this is just the color of the plastic so nothing special with this uh, really not but he does have a little port on his back there or you can put it I think that it really just makes it more cluttered than it uh, than it should be and I don't think it looks nice on him but yeah so overall really do like the bug mode I mean it's pretty neat and uh, looks pretty good so let's transform him one thing before I transform, just want to show you, I totally forgot to show you this. This is a really cool feature. He's got an opening jaw. I absolutely love that. I guess these are supposed to be his eyes down here. I guess these things just kind of look like their eyes up here. But down here, the red pieces are his eyes. But he does have the opening jaw, which looks awesome. Really well done. I mean, it's 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 hard to see at all when it's just down here because it's on like the bottom of the figure. But if you have him up, the opening jaw is uh, super cool. I absolutely love it. It opens a uh, ton too so overall really neat uh, but now let's go into transformation so to transform first of all just fold
hold up the uh, the hands. Unfortunately, they're really they um there is a little peg there so that they they, they just peg in, and then here's his uh, his little wings, and then take the end and just kind of split the end, and um, flip it to the bottom. These legs rotate out, and then the feet are rotate out. So just rotate these out, and uh, what's gonna happen is do like a little star scream or chicken kind of leg kind of pose. It's kind of like you got it bent at the middle here. So so just like this, just like that. So make it kind of like star scream, and then you just take the whole middle section assembly. Will rotate really nice. Doesn't get stuck on anything when you rotate it, and uh, so that works out pretty well. These little pieces just move to the side here. These um. Just uh, hold on a second. Here we go. So what you're going to want to do is then just rotate this down. Here you get this whole assembly, and that just pretty much opens up his stomach. And then it's kind of like this, so you get the hollow bit. So then just put it back right uh, where it should be. And of course you can't see his head now. The head you just want to raise up just a little bit so that you can get the bottom of the neck there. And then um, the, the wings, just hold on with them. Just move them aside a little bit. You can start rotating down the uh, the arms. Then the, uh, the little... Um, what do you call these legs, insect feet, I guess, just rotate down, and the whole nose just rotates down, and uh, that is pretty much it. I mean, uh, you can, you can, I, well, I'll talk about that in a second, but, so then you just rotate these down, and then there is Hard Shell in his uh, robot mode, or he's kind of like a beast mode, I guess, so overall, pretty neat. So, now to go over the regular figure. So now, first of all, just talk about the paint. I wanted to wait until I got it in this form to talk about the paint. Um, of course, not accurate. I mean, this is not accurate. Hard Shell in the, in the show was black. Uh, black and with some, like, red decals, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember 100% sure, but he was totally black. So, to have this gray, green, and yellow one is very inaccurate. But, I will say, it's a nice paint color. It looks good. This kind of looks like the kind of paint scheme that they do for a bug. They didn't do any crazy colors, like, you know, bright purple or something. Something stupid. It's a pretty all over green which is nice I like the olive green when it comes to uh, to like insects or stuff like that I, I prefer that way over the bright green so overall I think that the color choices were good I would have much rather have show accurate because I really like the toys to be accurate and because he isn't it is a shame but overall it still works out and uh, I think that he looks really nice even without the uh, uh, show colors but now to just go over the sculpt and everything here's the face See if we can focus. Look at that. Pretty neat. I think that the face looks nice. It does stick out a little bit, which I, you know, I know he does kind of have this hunchback thing, but I don't know if the head really sticks out this far in the show. But uh, but overall, it looks really nice. You get a purple Decepticon symbol. I'm pretty sure that's not, not accurate. I don't think he has a big Decepticon symbol right on his chest there, but it looks good. He is kind of skinny, and he does have some kibble. I mean, it's pretty just messed up in the waist here. You've got legs pointing out, and you've got these wings, and and then you've got on the back the huge nose and the mouth of the uh, uh, insect and everything. So it is a little bit cluttered, but because he's a insect, I think that he gets away with a lot because he can have that kind of goofier stuff because uh, he's you know a little insect guy. So I don't really mind it. Overall, he's pretty cool. As far as some articulation, he's got a no head articulation. Unfortunately, I mean you can have him look up, I guess, or down, but that's because of transformation. Um, just hold on a second. Sorry about that. So I think I was going into the sculpt. So overall, it is pretty cool. Um, this the, the way that the arm is formed is kind of interesting. It does give him like a bulkier forearm, and uh, and the little hands. Of course, they can hold the weapon, and I'll show you how the uh, the weapon works and everything. If you want to try, if you don't like this whole design with all the legs and the wings here, there are you know just really one way that you can make it slightly less. Uh, what you can do is you can take the wings and just rotate them back here and then just they collapse back there. They stick out quite far, but it actually gives a neat kind of look. It's pretty slick. Out of all the ways to reduce kibble from the front view, this is not a horrible way. It doesn't take up that much extra space, and it's a, it's, it's a decent look. And from the front, it looks like this. Still, hind still uh, you know, 
the little legs are sticking out and everything. I wish that these were on hinges so that you could just hinge them back. Um, and I, I mean, that would have been such an awesome uh, way to reduce the uh, the having them up here. But I, I guess an extra four hinges on every single figure would probably get expensive. So I don't really blame Hasbro for not doing that. Um, and one thing I'll also say is these little legs they get in the way of where you can put the arms just because they get they get just get hit by the uh, the arms so much and everything. Thing. There's, it just, it's, it's an annoyance, I will say. So those extra four hinges would have been uh, really great, but, um, but I, I guess why they did. I, I get why they don't do it. Why they didn't do it. As far as articulation on this guy, it's pretty good, except for the head, of course. Oh, maybe that's why I was the articulation. Sorry. Uh, ball jointed shoulder and um, ball jointed uh, wrists. Or sorry, ball joint and elbow, no waist unfortunately, ball joint and hips, double hinges at two different parts in the lower leg to do the star screen kind of look, and then a hinge at the ankle for uh, for transformation, but you can do a hinge. So you can put him in some cool poses, there's not a whole lot that you can do with him just because of uh, he's pretty cluttered with stuff, but overall I think it looks cool. As far as the paint goes, um, I'd say that the biggest uh, uh, point to look out for the paint is um, right here here just in the chest area because we can focus there we go I really just there's no problems over here but over here it does have just this little drop sticking out the front as you can see so I don't really like that and you know when I was deciding which one to open I'm looking over here and as you can see it's pretty shaky painted there too and then you do have a paint chip I mean there's just there's a lot of minor paint flaws definitely look out from the chest that's going to be your biggest point uh, to look out for and then um, you know in the waist and even the crotch piece you might be good to look out for but really the biggest problem has been the chest for me and particularly the right uh, chest plate his right chest plate so yeah so overall um, you gotta watch out because there's so, such different colors that just a little little thing like that is an annoyance I did decide to go over this other than the raggedy or jaggedy uh, pointed uh, uh, way that they painted it, but yeah. And um, overall, I do like his elbow articulation. It can go up a lot. He can do some cool things. Um, there's just not a whole lot of great things, poses that you can put him in. And um, the little weapon, of course, he does have the weapon. Multiple points that you can put it on, but uh, here, if you can, you can have it on the, uh, the arm. I do like how flush it is. It goes pretty flat, which is nice. There isn't this huge cannon sticking up. And I just think with all the clutter it just clutters it too much if you do want him to hold it like it's a, a handgun uh, you can do that as well and he can hold it I think that that might even look just a slight bit better but still not great so yeah so now uh, so to quickly just uh, let's go over some uh, comparisons here he is with this Insecticon. I think this one is definitely from the movie. I'm not quite sure what his name was. It might have just been Insecticon. As you can see, they look pretty cool. This was the original Scout that has been changed to Cyber's Commander and uh, uh, Shrank. And this one is uh, the same. To Actually, this one's a little bit more price than this one. So overall, it does show you how the figures have changed over the years. But as you can see, they look kind of neat. I, I definitely wanted to show them because they're the same type of size. But it's just the, the movie one looks so much bigger. It's really unbelievable. This looks like a little shrunken guy, but overall they do look kind of neat together. So if he has some other small Decepticons or small uh, Insecticons, it looks cool. Here he is with uh, uh, Megatron, his commander. I think this is a wonderful scale because uh, uh, they both are from the same size, and, but he's smaller and bulkier, which makes him shorter, and he should definitely be shorter than a uh, Megatron in my opinion. I I I'm not a hundred percent sure on the size accuracy from the show. But in just what I would like, this is perfect, you know, because he's just a little minion that you can have standing back there, which is cool. These are like uh, better versions of the Viacons. They're not so crappy. They're pretty good, but they do just get wasted sometimes when they need to. But there's some that are actually really good fighters. This happens to be one, and he is most known for his battle with Bulkhead. Uh... Them together, they, they they look a little bit. This guy looks a little bit smaller than he should be. They're about they're nice in size of height, but in size, it's not great. You do it does look like Bulkhead's bulkier in a lot of ways, and he's just got, got a lot of back kibble. Um, so I think that it's very they're good together. I think they look cool. Of course, you know the whole cliffhanger of season two, if I, I think it was, is Bulkhead was fighting him and uh, threw him in the lava and. Uh, 
and uh, Hard Shell, just as as Bulkhead was walking towards the um to get back to the base, he shot him once, and then he didn't know if he was going to live or die. So I do really like this character because he's he's uh he's known for really putting the uh the big uh, cliffhanger of the season, which is nice. So I do like him. So overall, size is pretty good. I think that he's he goes with Bulkhead okay, but he's great with Megatron. Overall, I do really like this figure. If you were to army build them, I I just suggest not to. I don't know. I like to army build things, but this is just one that I would not want to army build because Hard Shell was a character of his own. He wasn't just a you know a, a, an Insecticon that we see a whole bunch of. He was a particular character, which made him a lot cooler. And I guess if you had um, Arachnid, uh, she'd go well with him because at first she commanded this army and then they got passed over to Megatron. I won't go into the details. But overall, this is a pretty good figure. I like the design. It's pretty neat. Um, he does seem to be a smaller figure with a lot of uh, a lot of a backpack, if you will. He's got a lot of stuff on. But overall, pretty neat. I love his insect mode. His insect mode is really awesome. Really think it's cool. But uh, the robot mode, I think, is pretty nice itself. So I do highly recommend this for uh, fans of Decepticons of the show or completists of characters. Um, I would love to see this guy get a deluxe figure. I think Voyager's a little overkill, but a deluxe would be really nice. So there, so there you go. So hope you enjoyed it. That's my uh, video review of the Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Hard Shell uh, Cyberverse Commander figure. Thanks for watching.